Good afternoon, everyone. In this speech, I will be talking about water supply services in urban low-income areas. Cities in many developing countries are characterized by the extended planned areas, which serve as home to the higher and middle-income earners. Often, just across the street to these well-planned areas are unplanned areas, which serve as home to low-income earners in these cities. These low-income areas, which often occupy a smaller proportion of the city's land, serve as home to a higher percentage of the city's population. Access to basic amenities, including water, is limited in these areas. Often, commercialized water utilities mandated to supply water in the cities are reluctant to serve people in these areas. This is because the utilities who have the mandate to operate on commercial principles perceive the people in the low-income areas as poor and so cannot pay for water services. Meanwhile, in addition to their commercial mandate, the utilities also have the mandate to supply water to all people within their service areas, and this include people in the low-income areas. So, instead of supplying water through the conventional on-premises connections, the utilities resort to a range of distinct service delivery strategies, which are referred to as proper water services. They provide water to these areas through different infrastructure, such as water kiosks, yard taps, or prepaid dispensers. These supply modalities, which are often shared water points, come along with different management measures, where the utility delegates service delivery to small-scale operators or to technologies, as in the case of the prepaid dispensers. The combination of the different infrastructure and the distinct organization of service delivery are funded through a separate financial regime, one that have the consumers paying to a human intermediary, as in the case of the water kiosks, or through a technological intermediary, as in the case of the prepared dispensers, before they collect water and guarantees payment for services. I would like to conclude by stating that proposed services are an attractive way for water utilities to fulfill their dual objectives of ensuring commercial viability while expanding services to the poor. The different dimensions of proposed service provisioning work out well for the water utilities. The use of the low-cost technologies, the guaranteed payment for services, and the use of distinct organizational structures make it possible for the water utility to meet their social objective while continuing to focus most investments and efforts on servicing existing customers. While proposed services may indeed increase or improve the provisioning tool and accessibility of water in the low-income areas, it risks widening existing inequalities in water access. The urban poor may have access to poorer services for which they may pay more. Unless the implementation of these strategies is linked to explicit concerns about quantity, quality, and affordability of services to the poor, poor services will not lead to equitable access. Thank you for your attention.